Hello everyone. Welcome back to another Woodworking Wisdom. Um, this should have gone out live at 3 o'clock, but we've got a couple of problems just uploading it to YouTube. So um, we'll do our best to get through this this afternoon and get it uploaded to you as soon as possible. Um, thanks for your patience and tuning in anyway, though. Um, so today we are looking at a love spoon. We've got a really nice kind of simple, simplified, I guess, love spoon. Um, and that gives everyone a chance. It makes it accessible for everyone to have a go at this nice little project. And I mean, these love spoons, they can get really complicated with all sorts of lovely designs on there. And we'll talk a little bit about the designs as we go through because they're very symbolic things as well. There's lots of great videos on YouTube as well. Um, you know, have a little look around, investigate this stuff a bit further. Um, but today we are kind of going along with a, uh, a blog that we've done, a step-by-step -step blog uh, where, where you can kind of join in and, um, and go through the paces to make one of these, these love spoons. And like I say, we kept it really simple for this um, to make it accessible for everyone. Um, Okay, so first things first, um, we've got a few bits on the bench over here that we need to look at. I've got a piece of lime and we're gonna, um, we're gonna carve this from, from a piece of lime. Um, and I've got my little template here. Template is downloadable, it's just down below the video there um, and you'll see that word template, that is the link to our, um, our paper template which is a, a downloadable PDF if you wanted to, to have a go at this. So I'm just using a bit of this, um, this copy decks. Um, of course, you can transfer this onto your piece of wood any which way you like. Um, carbon paper would do the same thing. You could just sketch it on there, draw it out. Um, so yeah, however you like. We haven't got any questions today because we're not live. This is a pre-record, but um, Steph is looking after us on the cameras. And we're just going to go along and, um, and pretend we're live anyway. Okay, so there's our template. This bit of um, lime is about 20 mil thick, um, just under three quarters of an inch. And we need a couple of bits to do. We need to drill in through each of these kind of captive areas on our love spoon because we want to cut them out so they're all nice and hollow um, like that. So drill. We need to keep the drill bit nice and straight as we go down. Just have a little peek. My little board underneath is very thin so I don't want to drill into my bench. Almost there. I can see the, the spur just peep through. So try and keep the drill nice and upright. Good. Looking along the back there we've got our four holes and this external shape we're just going to cut just like normal on the scroll saw. Now I really like those lift and spur drill bits. They don't give you too much breakout and of course when we sit that down on the um, on the table, we're going to have that nice flat face and no kind of burrs. If you do get one, we can just whiz that off so it's not rocking on the scroll saw. Good. So that's our template. Let's take it over to the scroll saw. And nice, nice simple job this one. We've got nothing too tricky to, to cut. And I'm going to cut those internal shapes first. So we're coming off the clamp. Turn our little thumb screw there, which releases the blade. And then just thread that through. And away we go. Um, goggles. Let me find my goggles just on the bench here. Really important. We've got our eye protection on. And I've hooked this up to, um, to an extractor. So, we're just going to go around our shapes. Um, let's come in around this way. And start to cut this shape out. My little blower is engaged there. It's getting rid of all the 
the dust which may lay on the cut line sometimes. But let's just take this nice and slow. Keep that curve moving around. And just keep feeding onto that blade. Now I'm going to come up to that, um, that kind of stop area. Come back up the cut and then join in to our drill hole. I'm going to turn that off, lift this one up and get rid of that. And that allows us into this area without any kind of hindrance. Okay, so let me just get that so you can see everything on screen. On with the scroll saw and we're going to cut down into this little V of the, the heart here. So nice and simple. Let's get that out of the way and it's on to the next shape. So just threading that through our keyhole. You can hear that extractor just sucking that dust away there. Blade goes in. So I need to back that off a little. Blade goes in. Quick tension on there. You can always pop a little bit more on the back of the machine if you need it. Okay, sorry, let me just rejiggle this. Make sure you can see what's going on. We're good. And again, we'll just cut this little keyhole shape. This time I'm backing up the line twisting the project and coming around on a curve to meet that bottom line. And we want that nice and straight so that meet up with that one and then we can rest on the back of the blade here to come across the bottom the other way. I find that will give you a bit better de definition. Sometimes you can use the blade to kind of ping these bits out but every now and then it will get caught down in that little extraction bit so we just need to move that out of the way reset our hold down clamp make sure you guys can see what we're doing and then away we go so we've got a circle now so that means this piece of timber is going to do a full 360 right the way around or almost And you can see when we're scrolling how much the project moves around that pivot point, which is the blade. Good. Up we come with that one. And get rid of our bit. Oh. And then on to the next shape. Excuse me while well I just um, adjust that. A little bit more tension on the back there as we go. So this time I'm going to come up through this shape. Let me just change that so we can see what we're doing here. Up into that corner. This one I'm going to just leave a little pip on the end. Again we're going up to that little corner. And I like to have the two cuts meet there. Rather than try and swing around and get a little curve there, we can um, cut up to that point to meet it. nice and slow as we come to meet and it should just feel it kind of pop out 
There we go, we got that one out that time. Just going to stop the machine and retrieve that one. And we're going to do the same thing down here. Resting the blade on the side of the, the project there, or the wall that we've already cut. And just creeping up to our line and backing off. Take that little pip out that we left on the bottom of the heart there. And again, we're going to come up this way. And gently, so I'm taking all that forward pressure off now, allowing the blade to cut its way out. And then we can bring this around, resting on the back of the blade. And again, we're resting on that side wall until the little shoulder forms and we can crack on with our cut. Good. One more of these. We've got our kind of internal heart shape. And then all we need to do is just cut that outside shape. A little bit more tension. Um, this time, let's come round here. We can see the cut. Um, and let's engage that little blower. Make sure it's doing its job. So when we come to this point here, I'm going to do a little loop the loop. All of that middle section is waste. So we can come down here to that nice sharp point and we're going to overshoot it. Bring the project right the way around. And then again we'll get really nice definition. in that little section. Good. Gonna cut up into the middle here. Get rid of that waste. Again, just giving me a bit more room to work. We've got a little bit there. Needs to just come out. Check my tension. Drop my um, hold down clamp. And then again resting on this side here. Forming that shoulder. And continuing that cut. Good. Coming back down this way. There we go. Just holding on by the skin of its teeth there. So, just while I'm at a natural pause, I'm going to get rid of my rubbishy bits, my off cuts. And now we're cutting out the external shape of our spoon. Oops. Got to put my tension on. And we can just whiz round this shape now. I'm going to come in here. Get that blower working for us. Now this is a hand-drawn template. The one that's downloadable is a little bit more symmetrical. It's been through our um, graphic design guys, really good up there. And they've been really kind and, and um, created this into something downloadable. And it's a little bit more neat and tidy than my um, 
hand drawn one. So we're just following this shape, not forcing it too much on the blade. Again, coming into that corner, backing off, and we'll trim that off in a minute. This corner is not quite as severe, so I'm going to do a little um, change in direction on that one. And if we're not happy with that, we can always use a file or something to crisp up that, um, that little corner. Same here, I'm happy to um, just switch the direction on, the, on the where the cut's going. Changing my grip, coming over this side. To start to introduce that little arc along the top of our, um, our padlock here. and we're not too far off. The um, roughing out process. So this angle here is a little bit more acute, so what I'm going to do is come up to, slowing down as we approach that line, back up, and then, oops, come back onto our main outline like this and just um, and trim that off in a minute. Okay. So there we have our our sawn blank. Really great finish off of that um, that number five. Not too much clean up to do on this outside face. Um, yeah, a really nice cut. No breakout on the bottom at all. Okay, that's going to save us a lot of work. Just wanted to trim those little corners out. Then I forgotten to do that. So let's just back on with the saw. And then down this one, resting on the side of that blade, remember, form that shoulder, and then creep up until we see that chip just pop out. Good. And it gives us a really nice definition here and here. We've got that little um, bit of definition where we did our loop the loop there. So it's all looking nice and crisp, and it's going to save us, like I say, a lot of time on cleanup. Ben, as okay. like an entire novice myself, so mm -hmm. bearing in mind we don't have any questions, if you do go off the lines or anything, does it matter so much if you've never, you know, if you're a bit Not nervous? really. It depends. If you're a bit of a perfectionist, it will matter. Um, but these are, you know, these are hand carved. They're um, handmade. It wouldn't matter to me. Um, I, I would like, to, you know, I, I prefer to um, get things done and, and, and um, you know, do plenty of them um, so you know I think you know when you're starting a new uh, project like this um, don't worry if you're going off the line a little bit you know certainly don't throw it in the bin or throw it in the waste or on the fire um, see if you can you know bring it back through using abrasives through using uh, files that kind of thing really um, but no thanks Steph okay so we've got our um, our spoon here, or the beginnings of our spoon. Um, let me just grab my pencil. I've got a pencil just in the drawer here. Lovely. Sorry about that. Just escaped off camera for a moment. 
And um, I want to draw in a little kind of rim, I guess, for our, our spoon. So just using the side of my finger there to give me an equal distance round, we'll move the project. And that's going to give us a nice kind of spacing off of this rim. Okay, the back bit we can kind of make up and again you might want to put that as part of the design, you might want to taper the spoon in. I'm just going for a plain old um, kind of spoon bowl today. Okay, um, we could put that straight in the vise. Um, we could hold it in our vise and it's quite important you know that you're holding these work pieces um, at this stage we're going to use um, a couple of uh, bits and bobs to help us um, in the the vice there and you could also always use your um, your off cut okay so that can work nicely in the vice when we clamp down on that um, it's going to give us um, a really firm grip because of course it follows that profile right the way around. I'd like to put something in underneath there to, to kind of space it back off of the the bottom of the, um, the bottom of the vise but it needs to be a little bit narrower than um, the spoon itself. So here's my bit of wood um, and what we need that to be just slightly narrower than the spoon like I was saying so when we grip onto the, the spoon um, we've got that underneath to um, support the piece. It's actually gripped in the vise um, but it's not going to, you know, if we start putting in stop cuts here and here um, we're not going to push this down, okay? And it's not going to go under the, the level of the, um, of the vise or the, the bench. Um, so I'm going to start off with the bowl here, okay? Um, I'm going to use both hands to kind of give us uh, a decent grip. And if you look at the way I'm using this knife, um, it, we're limiting the cut. We're overhead there, but actually my thumb is off at a real angle. It looks as though I'm coming towards it, but it's not. It's um, We're just gripping our fingers in and that's the kind of motion that we're going for with this knife. Thumb down on the vise for a bit of support or it could come up to the the edge of the the workpiece. Okay so going to work across the grain for this one. Again I'm bringing my other hand in for a little bit of stability and we're going to just make some cuts coming towards the center here and just use that hook knife just to clear that off. If you find you're lifting the grain, if you're coming one way or the other, you'll find that the grain kind of rips, okay, and you kind of get this little tear in there. So we can use our hook knife across the grain like this and just bring it into get that nice kind of even uh, rim on the bowl. So nice and gently when we're working in that area and then we can take some bigger cuts um, using that kind of grip technique. And of course you can switch it around in the vise and come from the other direction. really neat little tool this um, hook knife can be a bit of a pain to sharpen um, we like to use um, little strops 
Um, and you can always roll that curved blade along and I'm putting my finger on top to add a bit of downwards pressure. Okay, that's going to polish this knife. Just bringing it out because I couldn't quite get my handle right the way down to get right on that um, inside face and just pushing that along the strop to polish this front edge. A trick to these is keep them sharp. Um, don't let them get too blunt. And even just that few strokes, I can feel a difference in the cut. So limiting that cut with my hand and I'm just bringing my other hand in for a bit of support really. And really you just want to work on that bowl until it's down to the depth that you want it. This is a, a decorative spoon. Not so much, you know, it's not really one you're going to be eating with. It's a, um, it's ornamental really, and that's why they've usually got this kind of shape in the top, um, so that you can hang the, um, the spoon up, so it goes up on the wall. So just try and keep that, um, that rim looking good. Carving down into that middle section, these two different directions of the cut are kind of meeting up and giving us a nice, um, nice shape. Even across the grain, this can lift sometimes. It's just you know, coming at the right angle, really. Make sure it's all nice and even, that we haven't got too many kind of lumps and bumps. So usually I work at that a little bit more, get that a bit deeper. And again, always take your time with something like this. This is not a job you want to rush. Even if it's Valentine's Day tomorrow, we need to uh, <laughs> take our time and make sure we're, we're using these safe practices. Because it is very easy to, um, you know, to slip with a knife like that. Always keep yourself fixed onto the bench. So pressure down with your hands, your palm, your thumb, wherever you can kind of get some... Um, stability so this knife isn't just um, kind of traveling or your arms not traveling through air and potentially um, you know having a boo-boo okay so we're not far off now just want to make sure that these are coming and we haven't got a too big of a drop off. This time I'm using the actual handle of the knife. So my thumb's on the bench here and the handle of the knife is kind of butting up against my thumb. Okay, so there's a little bit of work to do in that, but you get the idea we need to trim that bowl and get that nice um, kind of even uh, dip. How far would you recommend going down if it were yours? For the depth? 
Yeah, for the depth, depth how far would you say? Well, it, it's really for show. Um, it's it's up to you, really. Any, you know, um, you could do a really deep um, spoon. A good way to check, just pop a little straight edge on the top. You could always get two and and, and measure it if you wanted to measure it. This one is it's only about five mil deep at the moment but you know it looks a lot deeper than that not quite so much on the flat there but you can see it kind of casting that shadow you can see the um you know it, it doesn't really have to go very deep and again that's a kind of personal choice um, do it how you like but it is a spoon after all so we do want a a nice um, you know that bowl has to be there that's a kind of integral part of the shape but take that deeper if you like I'm not going to today um, we have got a couple of other examples that we can show you Okay, so let's do a couple of other little bits uh, regarding carving. So I've got my um, little flex cut set here. So we want the handle. And be really careful how you're taking these out of the packet or out of their holder. We don't want to pull this one out and foul ourselves on, on any of these. So I'm going for... Um, this one is about a three sweep, I think, um, and it's about nine mil um, wide, so that would be a, a, a three sweep nine. I'm picking this one because it's kind of echoing the shape of the, the gentle curve here and here. We've got it again there and there. Okay, so that's why I'm choosing this one. And I'm lining up that cutting edge and then just bringing it up high and if we come onto camera four there Steph you can see that that's going in nice and straight and we need to just put some downwards pressure there and this is going to be our stop cut we need to do the same here so offering up the cutting edge bring that up at 90 degrees to the workpiece and then just pushing that in a little bit of a wiggle and we want to go fairly deep we want this heart to kind of stand proud of um, these bits here good we've got the same here we can always take these a bit deeper if we want so our stop cut a little bit of pressure not too heavy with these we know they've got quite a, um, a thin uh, steel on this and the same there a little stop cut which we can just pair some of this material off up to so now we've got our cuts in we can start to carve away just taking small cuts by raising the handle on the on the chisel gouge and just taking them up to that stop cut and you should find this chip just falls off okay if it doesn't we need to just take in a little bit more of um, you know put a little bit more on that stop cut and again we carve up to that line and these chips should just fall off and that quite quickly gives us um, some depth coming back this way okay so I've gone down beyond that stop cut we don't really want to pick those off that will give you a little kind of fluffy um, edge we want to just get down into that one 
take that a little bit further and again this is up to you how deep you want to take this um, whether you want to actually separate the two so the two actually really do intertwine and we don't have that as an illusion but quite quickly getting a little shape on there let's come up to these other stop cuts hands always behind the chisel pairing those off just up to those um, those stop cuts this glue can create a little kind of slip with the tool so just be careful as we're working you can always take that back off good so Ben quick question for me mm -hmm. obviously as a no novice and everybody at home is probably knows this already but does it matter when you're planning this piece and, and sticking down your template, does it really matter what grain direction is? Is it quite important for this section that it's in a certain way? Or? Yeah, absolutely. So um, the, the grain on our piece of wood is coming um, straight along. So nice and straight grained. Um, you know, if you've got any knots or any patterns coming through, quite often they can look really nice. Um, but they will, you know, if you're a beginner, try and stick with something straight grained and a nice and easy sort of timber to work with. So this um, this lime or basswood, as they call it in the States, um, is a really nice, um, easy material to work with um, and holds detail really well like, for, your, for your carving. Um, so grain direction is important. We don't want to um, have the grain running this way because then it's very short grained in this area. Thank you. So hands always behind the chisel. We're really just kind of trying to relieve this heart shape. Um, on the top here. And you can remove quite a lot of material. You know, even though we've got this very thin steel, they're super sharp and you can just whiz the material off. This hand is kind of holding the blade and coming back with the blade, okay, uh, or the steel. It's not, um, you know, I'm not doing this. I'm holding the, um, the steel like this, and then they're all moving together so as not to pull the, um, you know, that cutting edge, you know, into the danger zone, if you will. Good. So a little bit more shaping to do on this. Like I say, this is part of a, um, a, a blog post. We have um, a how-to um, going through all these steps. Um, so check that out. This is a kind of companion, I guess, to to a video like that. And I'm just taking almost a little sh kind of chamfer off off of the um, off the side here. So that's pulling up the grains and coming around this corner. Remember we've got the grain direction here. I'm kind of picking at it there. So let's come back the other way. At this stage there's still plenty more carving to do. So that torn grain we're just going to carve right back off. So as we come around the corner here we want to travel this way. If we're working back around this way, we just need to walk around the workpiece and start to round these edges off. Okay, I'm going to get rid of this template now. There's a bit more of it's got a really 
Um, you know, you've got a bit more work to do up in this um, this bowl, or I have a bit more work to do here. Um, but for now, we're just um, coming around these shapes and just knocking off that hard edge um, using our chisel. So remember, this curve, we're coming this way, and we're coming this way. So from that kind of high spot, if you will, we're going back the other way, and that's going to sever off those fibers in the grain instead of pulling them and 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 the 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 wood sort of tearing if you will and back this way and then these little bits can be a little bit tricky what i tend to do is get them as best you can so into the center, come back the other way, and hopefully you'll meet up with the one you've just cut. And if not, we can always get a bit of abrasive in there to, to tidy that up later. So quite quickly, you can throw a shape onto this. It's just thinking about you know that grain direction make sure you're working with the grain and um, like I say we can always do a little bit of sanding to to bring these in but what we're trying to do here is just soften all of these hard edges And you can also do this with a knife. You know, if you prefer using a knife, prefer the kind of whittling um, type action. Let me grab, oh, we can use this pelican knife here. So where are we? So the way I'm gonna hold this, I've got the, the work piece in one hand, I've got my knife in the other. Uh, this is the flex cut little pelican knife here. Um, again, we need to um, be wary of that grain direction. Um, and I'm going to put, um, you know, grab the, the project, nice, the good grip, and then one thumb behind the other. And we're going to just, using both thumbs, we're kind of making a pivot shape. Okay, again, really safe. We don't want to be hacking like this um, although there are a couple kind of green woodworking uh, methods where you can work like that but for here we've got a nice seasoned bit of timber we're just going to use this little kind of pivot technique to um, get rid of some of these um, hard shapes Sometimes I use my th um, my kind of off thumb, if you will, never kind of shoving it through the project with this hand holding the knife. And again, you can take material off quite quickly. I quite like this sort of faceted look, um, the kind of hand carved look and you can also use that kind of um, grain direction to really kind of horse material off if you're not down to where you need to be and you, you're not worried about the finish at this point you can split you know um, areas off so that's it really we just want to sort of follow this shape around make sure we're happy rounding all these areas off Just make sure you've got full control of the knife all the time. You can work fast, but just give yourself some practice first. Take a few practice cuts. Make sure you're happy with it. So it's coming together. We've got our kind of basic shape there. We've got a, a little bit of an overlap going on through here. Um, we've got the beginnings of a bowl. That does need a tidy up and a, and a sand. And then, of course, the, the kind of padlock heart 
at the top there. Um, a lot of symbolism in these spoons. Um, quite often you'll see chains which um, kind of um, symbolize that kind of link together. Um, this is a padlock, so we're kind of, um, you know, promising your heart to someone. Um, you'll sometimes see keys. You sometimes see um, balls in cages, which, which symbolize um, the amount of children you're going to have. But this is really a kind of love promise, if you will, this, um, this love spoon. Um, but check out those, um, those symbols. Uh, Welsh love spoons are really lovely, old tradition. And some of them are fantastic if you get, um, you know, start having a look around. There's lots of great people on YouTube doing videos on these spoons as well. Um, you know, check them out. Okay, so you can now get the rest of the story. We're going to carry on like that. We're going to round these shapes off. Um, keep going with the knife, with the um, with the gouge, if you um, you know, if you prefer. Um, and you can also use your other carving tools. This one's got a flat back on the moment, um, but again, just if you want to um, to shape the back, I like to do at least the kind of um, head of the spoon here. Make sure um, it's got that kind of um, gap in. Because like I say, this will be hung on a wall or hung up on display. Um, so quite often you'll find these spoons have a flat back. Um, but I like to, to at least relieve this. Um, so there we go. We're, we're kind of splitting off with the grain there. We took that big chunk off. Um, and now we can kind of blend that in come back so we're working with the grain and just remove that smooth it in but you can use that you know use that to effect sometimes um, if you've got a lot of material to come off I like this pelican knife because it's got that long sweep on it you can kind of get that pivot going it'll cut right the way along Good. So you can see the shape coming together. Here's one we did earlier in true kind of Blue Peter fashion. Um, all rounded in, softened in. Um, so the next stage after this, once you're happy with the carving, I like to um, just separate the, um, the spoon off of the handle um, using a little cut along here. And again, have that in your, in your vise and use the curve of that um, that gouge or chisel to, f to match that profile along and that's the same thing we're doing a stop cut and then we're taking little cuts up to that um, to remove that material and then it's just a, um, a question of um, of sanding um, I like to sand mine with quite a rough abrasive at first um, something like a 150 um, that will really start to blend things in and quite quickly as well, you know, it, you don't have to spend too much time um, with the sanding. That will soften in all those little facets. Um, and as you go, just, you know, make sure you've done all the work that you want to do with this kind of higher grit abrasive. Or, or lower number I guess um, so this is a 150 grit we want to get rid of all our kind of tooling marks and stuff with this one and just keep going like that until you're happy with the shape what I then tend to do is um, put some hot water on it so um, a, a sponge with some hot water that's going to raise the grain and then I like to have a little quick go over with this 150 and then we can start to ch go through the um, through the grits, um, getting finer and finer each time, until we end up with a really nice kind of um, smooth finish. Okay, and then just a drop of finishing oil on that one to kind of um, to finish it off and bring out the natural um, kind of beauty in the wood. Um, 
that's about it for today like I say this links up to a, a how-to online um, you know if you um, if you wanted to go through that step by step the the templates on there as well um, but enjoy um, you know really really good to give this one a go and Valentine's just around the corner it's a it's a perfect gift um, thanks for joining us um, come back soon for more woodworking wisdom if you've enjoyed this make sure you hit the um, the like button and subscribe um, and we'll see you back for more soon <laughs>